Hey guys, Tutorin slash Lawrence Wayne here, and as you can see, I'm busy uploading a really big program to the Commodore 32. It's a really cool program as well. Uh, it's the it's a line drawing program, so uh, it's Brehinsman's line drawing. I don't know how to pronounce that name. I don't even remember how it's spelled. Uh, but some guy, uh, pretty popular algorithm. Uh, he made an algorithm that basically draws lines between points really fast, or really fast on fast machines. And I've basically built, I've basically made it in uh, this Minecraft computer. So I've written it in the high level language entirely, no, no uh, manually writing assembly. And uh, it's also got a nice little interface with the little D pad as well. So I'm going to show that off. So here you got the little red square and you can move that around with the buttons and it'll be a little slow and uh, it may be a bit laggy the recording that's mostly because I'm recording in windowed mode so I can show you guys some other stuff while it's busy so I'm just gonna put this some random place I'm just gonna move it one more to the right uh, okay that's enough Push A to confirm, and then eventually a green square will pop up, or this light will turn on, which indicates that we're now moving the green square. Just gonna try stem on both of these buttons, so I can show you that this works as an eight-directional pad as well. So there we go. You just wait for it to move a bit. So yeah, and I've also switched to uh, wooden buttons, so basically the main reason for that is so you can throw an item on them and go do something else while the thing still moves. Yeah, that'll be enough. And then we push this button again. And by the way, this D-pad uses command blocks to uh, read the buttons. There's actually no wiring underneath the buttons at all except for the center one that's for uh, the user input thingy. And then this light will turn on, and as you can see, the RAM starting to fill up with all sorts of stuff as it uh, prepares for the algorithm. It's basically figuring out in which direction to go and stuff. And when that's done, this light will turn on, and then this will all disappear and start drawing a yellow line between those two points. So, um, I guess I'll wait for that. Uh, while that's going on, I'm going to make it so you can customize the... Uh, D-pad yourself, so you can choose if you have lamps on corners, or no lamps, or sandstone, or soul sand floor. Right now it's basically, they don't do anything. But yes, the third light's turned on, and it started drawing the line. So, um, I'll just show you the code quickly. Here's the code that it's currently running. That's all of it. Quite a bit of random commented out stuff. Uh, these are the global variables, which is basically what it tries to find in the GUI. So it starts at point 16, 16, which is the center of the screen. Uh, sets the color to red. Then, until you push the button, it'll basically um, constantly check for your inputs and move the square. And then when that's done, it'll store the coordinates and then do the same thing for the second set. And there's some interesting stuff here with GPU save and load. Um, as you can see, it's still rendering the line. Um, basically, we now have a uh, frame buffer that you can basically just store and use later. And that's this layer over here. So there's nothing interesting on it. It only ever stores the little red square. So I'm not really using it for much right now, but it would make rendering things a lot faster. It's what basically makes it possible to have the red square and the green square on the screen at the same time without having to remember the previous position of the red square or rather the green square so you have to remove it and then place it back again. You can just restore it to when there was only a red square and then just add the green square and then put that on the buffer. You may have also noticed um, that it was pretty smooth, like the pixel would disappear at the same time the next pixel appeared. That's because this GPU is double buffered. And right now it's actually, interestingly enough, not working in double buffered mode. As you can see over here, 
we disable the buffer before we enter the draw line function. So while the GPU is double buffered, it can actually leave double buffered mode, and you can actually decide which mode. By default, the double buffering is off, but as soon as you use GPU.push, which is to push the frame buffer onto the screen, it'll automatically realize that whatever you're doing is trying to use the double buffered feature and it will enter double buffered mode automatically. So that basically means you can work on frames without the user seeing them, which can just make your project look a lot more professional. So um, while well, this is still running, it's a pretty, it takes pretty long. Uh, I'd like to see if anyone knows any redstone computers that uh, actually run this algorithm, so I can sort of compare, see how fast this is going in comparison. Of course, this is kind of unfair because this uses command blocks and all the other ones probably use redstone, but I'd still like to see it. Uh, this is probably still intentionally running slow because we're only using GPU 1, uh, ALU 1, sorry. We're not using ALU 2, which is still outdated. <laughs> As you can see, I still need to update this to the fancier instant command block logic stuff. And, um, well, I guess, what can I show you? Oh, it's still busy. Um... This is where the instructions are read, but you've probably already seen that in my other videos. But if you can like zoom out, you'll see that a lot of things are just sort of happening at once because this sort of has a two-stage pipeline. As it's running this command, it's loading the next one over here with the little block being placed over there. And um, yeah, some some stuff uses almost like three-stage pipeline stuff. For uh, the GPU commands, for example, they actually run what while um, the next command is being run here. A lot of other things do that as well. And here we have the dual addressing lines. So you can actually, as you can see, the read and the write. This is the read line. And this is the, if I can just right click on it, the write line. They basically run almost just one tick after the other. So basically it's reading it and just as it's read the command, it will immediately write it uh, like one tick later. So that's some uh, that's for some speed as well. So yeah, that's pretty cool stuff you can do only with command blocks and uh, the RDF slash ORE is kind of angry at me for using command blocks and they're like, oh my gosh, that's, I don't even remember what their argument was. But they basically don't like command blocks for whatever reason. I still think this looks pretty cool, seeing all these just lamps blinking all over the place. And uh, I said it was still challenging, and that you still have to like make sure all the timing's correct. And then they counter argued that with saying, "Well, you should get a mod that adds instant redstone." But that's still not the same thing, and I'm not even sure if they were serious or not. As you can see, the line's almost done, and. Um, well, there's not much else to say, I guess. Oh yeah, there's a uh, one thing I kind of forgot to mention. As you can see, the display's lighting has been changed slightly. It's now like backlit, or not really backlit. It's really frontlit. Basically, this I just added a little roof here, but added a light, a slight opening at the top to let natural light through. So that gives the display like a cool bright effect, make it look like a real monitor, it's just giving off light. So I thought that looked cool. Ah, there we go, we're done. Then the lights just all turn off, and the computer resets itself, and there we are. There's our line. And, uh, oop. that's it. Oh. It's a pretty cool interface, probably one of the cooler interfaces for coolest interfaces for uh, this kind of line drawing algorithm. And uh, yeah, thanks for watching, I guess. And bye.